and dirty. What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Late Game, episode 32. My name is Chan Man, and with me I have Red Eye, Jack Attack, In Control, and Destiny. Here to bring you some late game action. Uh, I'm kidding. I don't know. I every time I turn on this stream, I say in my mind, "What's up? What's up?" And I'm like, I can't. I should have covered this in my contract when you signed me to be a host of the show. <laughs> but I just realized Stephen has an animation at I, the beginning. That's he a turns really good into point. a desk. I don't turn into anything. So I'm not even in it. I actually <laughs> have a new animation that's on the way. I haven't announced it because uh, the person that's doing it is extremely busy with other stuff, and I don't want to generate okay. I put pressure on him. But it's going to be another one, and you will be in it. So Good. we'll have that taken care of. It's going to be epic. But what is he going to turn into? Uh, you know, so Is there going to be a poll so we can vote so what he turns into? <laughs> That's not a bad idea. When I first started... That sounds like a horrible idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you may have more faith in the community than I do. Uh, when, <laughs> when I first started the show and uh, I had guests, I was thinking of uh, having the guy who did the realism, the guy who did the first animation do like a special you know picture so kind of like steven is the desk like a special picture of everyone what the first time they make an appearance and so the first one was going to happen jeff was on the show number one and i had him drop some concepts for me and one was a colossi but with the dat jeff face from that uh, uh with like the hair sticking out yeah. to the side and stuff i thought it was pretty fun good one yeah i yeah any of them i just realized i'm a poor negotiator should have should have fought for my rights do you do you have a unit you prefer uh, probably not the Colossus, because in Legacy, it won't exist anymore, but other than that, you know. Okay, I'm but... just kidding. It's fine. Hello. He, wants to, he wants to morph into a sea, Seahawks linebacker. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, the community's just been a, a boiling volcano of hot lava-like passion, and uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about it. But with oh. us, we have our two guests, Jack Attack, returning yet again. Always great to have you. And Red Eye as well, another returning guest. Uh, two great people in the community. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff today. Let me pull up the uh, agenda. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the news. We're going to talk about things that are happening. We'll discuss the legacy of the void, the changes that are happening, what you guys feel about on the community sentiments. Nathaniel Jack Attack himself and a lot of other people have been speaking out. We'll also be talking about comparing Valve to Blizzard. A lot of analogies have been made, especially with uh, Valve coming out with a lot of changes to uh dota recently and then the, you know the storied history of csgo or i'm sorry counter-strike in general then csgo and how valve responded to that and then where we can draw from that to look at blizzard you know what's logical what's not things like that we'll also talk about the youtube streaming platform and the gom tv uh model for gsl you know the requiring subscriptions to get mm. good quality uh there was a really good post that was recently made about that and, uh i haven't heard anyone address that so we'll talk about that too but uh, before we get into that, let's talk about news. E3, a huge video game convention, lots of things going on. There were Blizzard announcements, uh, one of which is that in July we'll be getting access to uh, we will be getting access to some story mode. I, I believe it was three levels or something like that of story mode for Legacy of the Void, and it's mm -hmm. supposed to divide the gap to, or uh, bridge the gap between Heart of the Swarm, Legacy of the Void. Jeff, did you get to see that segment yesterday? No, I don't watch any of E3, but I read about it, I, which I guess is almost as good. Yeah. Um, Wait, why don't you watch any of E3? I'm just, you know, I, I don't have anything against it. It's not like it, it's not like if someone turned it on and was like, "Watch this, Jeff," I'd be like, "Nah." <laughs> but it's just, uh, I watched a little bit. Like I watched them announce um, Kingdom Hearts three, and I was bewildered by the Shenmue announcement. Like people really flipping <laughs> out about a weird like Japanese da dating game type of thing, and. Um, it's just not my bag because usually the second they announce it, that YouTube video is on Facebook or somewhere else. Uh, the article is up somewhere else, so I can just kind of read it at my own leisure. Mm -hmm. And E3 goes on during the day when I'm streaming and stuff, so I just don't watch it. But as far as the the extra content goes, I think a lot of people are really excited about the single player. I, I think I can summarily discount almost everyone here except for probably Jack Attack because he's weird about all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> but I think, but I think any kind of content like that is good and exciting for people. And then, you know, even on Reddit this morning, they showed um, an alternate skin for some Protoss units. Whether or not that'll be available in, in multiplayer, that's of course I don't think said. 
It's but it just shit, shows though. that they are doing stuff like that, which is cool. I mm -hmm. mean, it's just nice. It's, I, I, I don't think anyone can look at this and... Actually, excuse me, I was about to say I don't think anyone can frown upon this, but I did read a few comments where they were like, so that's where their efforts are going, and it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> there it is. You yeah. got upset. <laughs> All right. Well, so. you know, I think that everyone, even myself, I had the hope that they were going to say something about multiplayer, but realistically, E3 isn't about the, you know, the esports scene specifically. It's a, it's definitely uh, a, trying to appeal to the broader stroke of gamer. So I think, I think that, they're also getting multiplayer updates in real time. I don't think they have any secrets. I think they d definitely plan on this being a slow, fucking long process of of feedback and implementation i don't think they had a big ace of spades to play at e3 well obviously they didn't what i mean is i think it was i, I think we shouldn't have that expectation i think yeah for sure it would have been the new unit the liberator but they pff, they threw that out like three weeks ago because they don't care they're not waiting for e3 e3 is not huge they, for, i don't think do they not uh, usually we see stuff released at blizzcon anyway because it's on their terms yeah. then isn't it Mm -hmm. yeah, they've, they've pretty much always been like that. It's not. I don't. I didn't feel like I was missing something from Blizzard at E3 or anything. Yeah, I don't think. Um, I don't think it would be reasonable to expect any sort of multiplayer stuff to come out for E3 oh. because it's sort of like, okay, we got the Liberator done. No, we'll wait for E3, then we'll put it into the bait. It's like that's not going to happen. No, because yeah, they that. would need to get it tested out anyway. But yeah. with the stuff, I would be but... curious to see if times do change as it goes on, though, because E3 has always been a big deal. Mm. But Blizzard used to be like. Uh, the cock of the walker, or whatever the old people say. Like they used to be, they didn't have to care about things like E3 and stuff like that because yeah. they didn't need that platform. I don't, I don't think they need that platform. But what I do think is that in this day and age, we're having other developers and, and companies getting up to Blizzard level, and, and in some ways, especially with Valve, you can argue surpassing them. So all of a sudden, it's becoming maybe you do reveal a unit at E3. Maybe you do start talking about your big stuff. At E3, because BlizzCon is definitely as big as big of a platform. Like nobody's like, what's BlizzCon? Like anyone that plays games <laughs> knows what BlizzCon is. But um, this is the like every company really swung for the fences. Yeah, they but that's, that's they because Final this Fantasy is... VII, you guys. Like if, if if we're not if we're not living in a day and age where new ideas are dead, then let's just remake the greatest games ever made, and that's what's happening. So before we E3 is their BlizzCon, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's this is true. Yeah. A lot yeah, of these guys don't, don't have their own. They don't have their, their, own, you know, their own thing. So. so looking at this, before we talk about other E3, uh, specifically with this, one thing I wasn't clear on after they spoke, there are those, it sounded like three match, uh, three levels or whatever, it's going to be three games. Yeah. Uh, do you get those and access to the multiplayer with pre-order, or are those going to be free for everyone? What was the deal on how you get those? They said that, like, everyone like even if you don't have like starcraft like everyone gets those three missions it's like a total complete promotional anyone who has a computer and connection to the internet can get those three missions and play them and probably the map editor right because because you can play custom maps for free as well i believe without owning starcraft yeah you can play custom maps you can play you can do everything except for one versus one ladder with the starter edition as long as you have a buddy okay yep. and so then they were talking about access it sounded like they said access to the beta with pre-order in july did I hear that right? I did not hear that, but I could have missed it. Okay. Well, then, uh, you know, don't take it as gospel, but I think that's what they said. But that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It, yeah, it totally makes sense. I and, mean, they've done it with all the other betas. And let's mm -hmm. hope that means ladder is coming, right? Uh, with that, let's talk about other E3 real quick before we continue down the StarCraft path. Red Eye, anything in particular jump out at you this year that you're, you're fucking hyped for? Uh, well, I'm like you guys, I'm a, I'm a game nerd, have been for years, and, you know, I pretend I don't really care about E3, and I inadvertently fall across a stream and end up watching, <laughs> like, Fallout 4 and just salivate for about an hour afterwards. Um, well, Red Eye, you're excited about Deuce X, man, I saw you... Uh, Deuce X, I, I'm... I'm, your Twitter I'm if that, last night. Honestly, if that's as good as it should be, and we know the kind of game they can make, then, yeah, I'm really excited about Deuce X. I, it's just one of those games that's just... I don't know. It, it just has everything, and if they fulfill their promise of making it um, like The Witcher Three, where it's you know you really do decide how the story unfolds, and you have a different ending or a different pathway towards the end of the game, then that that'll be amazing as well. Um, Fallout Four looked just astonishing in places. It was uh, it was incredible, but I'm I'm a bit worried because really there hasn't been a proper Fallout since the first one, so I'm I'm not sure how that one will pan out. But it looked amazing. Um, what else? Battlefront, obviously, you know, sucker for those. Um, 
you and Todd. I quite looked. I quite looked the hitman as well. I've, I know it's regurgitated bullshit so many times over <laughs> and over again, but it still looked pretty cool. Um, Wait, what, you I mean, there was like... lows. There was lows. My my wallet literally was like, oh no, please, no. I don't want to spend any more money before the end of the year. <laughs> Wait, so you don't um, so like mate, Fallout? Like you didn't yeah. like Fallout Three? Uh, no, not particularly. Okay. I, no, I love Fallout I just, 3. I just didn't enjoy it the same way I did the first two. And I don't think you'll like Fallout 4. No, I don't think I will either. I mean, it, like I said, it looked absolutely incredible. Probably the best-looking game of the, the whole show, but... Um, Why did you like Fallout? Know. Just curious. A uh, little bit of me cheered when I heard that Doom was being remade, and then I remembered Doom 3, and then I cried a lot. Oh, you didn't um, like Doom 3 either. No, Doom 3 was horrible. Utterly horrible. But what about why, that? Why didn't, why, didn't you like, <laughs> why didn't you like Fallout 3 at all? I, I don't know. It just... I mean, unless you're going to mod the crap out of it, then... Uh, it was just meh. I don't know. I just didn't... It wasn't one of those games that I enjoyed. I don't know why I can't put my finger on it. But Doom 3, for instance, it was like playing in treacle. It literally... You would move around and it would feel like you were stuck on stuff all the time. Um, and multiplayer was absolutely atrocious. So... I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I think about Doom 4. How about that? Great, great franchise again, but, you know. How about that real-life Pip-Boy, though? Huh? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, I'm not I a... shuddered. Th did they say how much that'll cost? It has it's to like $130-something, dollars. dollars, I think. Oh, it's less than I thought. Yeah. No. I I used to be all about that stuff, and then I realized that, like, all the collector's oh, items I got from those games are just... They're, like, in boxes somewhere or at a garage sale, so I just... Unless it's amazing. Uh, but, yeah, there's some... I'm, I'm excited... For Final Fantasy on the PS4 mm -hmm. 7 is going to be yeah, awesome. Yeah, for sure. Well, Final Everyone's Fantasy. childhood. Final Fantasy 7 remake. I hope they do 8 afterwards. Do that. I really, really like 8. Why not? I feel Sierra. like if they were to, not to shit on 8, but I feel like if they were going to remake another one, it would be like 9 or 10. Probably not 10, because 10 isn't as dated. But I feel like 9 would be like the next candidate. 8 was like, I think 8 was like, 8 is probably the most divisive, like, Final Fantasy, or like, even like Japanese RPG that I've ever heard of. Like, for 8, I don't think anybody... Like, if you ask somebody how they feel about Final Fantasy VIII, the answer is either, oh my god, that was, like, one of the best, or it was fucking horrible. I hated it. I've never a lot met of, yeah. a middling Post 7 gets Fantasy that VIII. reaction. Like, uh, 10 is also, in my opinion, one of my favorite games of all time, but there's people yeah, who for sure. would actually, like, call me an idiot for saying that. and I, I wouldn't necessarily fault them, because it's, cause there are some lame-ass... It's the funny, though, like, <laughs> I, have a, I have such a... Yes, I have such a huge limit of, like... All right, this is pretty funny and also terrible, but I can tolerate it. But then there's other people that are like, <laughs> I don't know. Anime is so weird sometimes. They're just they're, they're like holding a hot dog and they're like, I love you, but I'm gonna murder you and I hate you. And it's like, and they're like, oh, what a great line. And I'm like, you're a different human than I am. Like we're we're on, <laughs> you're from a different plane of existence. Like I don't even understand. It's the stupidest thing I've ever fucking heard in my life. And they're like, you're an idiot. And we're both right. So, <laughs> anyways, I'm on a huge tangent, but I'm really excited for. Uh, they actually announced a couple of things before even E3, but uh, XCOM 2. And you know what I like about it? You know what I like about it? It looks like there's barely any fucking changes. There's like melee, three new aliens. Fine. <laughs> give me, give me twenty new guns. Give me new maps. Make it longer, and I am happy as a clam. I, you know. I think that's, I think that's me in my old age. A lot of games, though, Jeff, isn't it? I know. That's what, yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, like, I, I'd rather the safe approach other than we're completely redoing everything. I'm like, I don't trust it's, you. It's like, <laughs> the difficult, it's like the difficult third album from Banjo, like, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Why yeah. do you have to change? They have, no to, do their, they have to redo their entire music. sound. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Bioshock, uh, I think the Bioshock games did a good job of that, of building off the previous ones, where they kind of yeah, kept yeah. what worked and they got rid of, and then the gameplay felt pretty good in all of those. That's true. That's, that's a good point. point. Yeah, enjoyed point. those. Uh, there was two other games, uh, Just Cause 3, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, and Block Ops, Black Ops 3, is um, it's going to be interesting that they've moved Are you excited for Black Xbox. Ops? I, I'm, I'm sort of excited, yeah. Um, it's exactly Advanced Warfare, only... Isn't yeah, that which is great. Black Ops. It goes back to your point of, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I think, it kind of um, is. Bro I mean, it depends on who you're asking. Like, uh, yeah, like sure. the consumer, fuck no, it makes a bajillion dollars in two days. Yeah. But if you ask like the competitive players, they're like, sure. this is not as fun. So, did you guys have you guys followed the Call of Duty scene for the past few years with the Modern Warfare yeah. series? I'm friends okay. with a lot of them. So, what did you? I think that Modern Warfare Three was perfect. Like Modern Warfare Three, I thought it was it was 
a lot of fun. The maps were great. I thought the system for the the kill streaks and all that. I, I liked the kill streaks. I liked the guns. Wait, what was different in that? I'm not trying to be facetious, but what was the difference in Modern Warfare Three from like Modern Warfare Two or Blobs or whatever? Um, you know, two. I didn't. I came in at the tail end of two, so I didn't know a lot about it. Uh, for Black Ops, it's a lot of the the guns. Like, what's the difference with like... the kill streaks? The way they uh, the way kill streaks work. I can't. Oh, what's changing the kill streaks? Shit, I can't remember. I just remember I played Black Ops for a month and I hated it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious. Every call but, so I don't like you, like you kill like four people and then you get like a UAV and then you kill seven more and you get like the, the kill streaks are different. Like the the like the wards. Like you get the uh, in Modern Warfare Three, you get the like the the auto turret. You get all that stuff now, but I don't follow Black Ops anymore. After I tried Black Ops the first time, I didn't like it, so <laughs> I just kept going with the regular because they're made by two different companies and. Uh, Black Ops and really? Yeah, yeah, they all are. It's trade off. So Modern Warfare comes out one year, Black Ops comes out the next year. Let me just cut you off right here. Can we all agree that Kiefer Sutherland in World at War was one of the greatest games of all time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at I that. didn't play it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. I was just... Either way, I, I just felt that uh, after Modern Warfare three, I didn't like Ghosts, and I I like Advanced Warfare. I think the uh, the what do you call it, the eco suit or whatever. I like the mechanics behind that, and it adds a lot more dynamic play into it but uh then just the running and gunning there's a little more movement to it but i felt like modern warfare 3 just the way that it was designed i liked it a lot i don't know i didn't know if you guys I, followed I, I'm, it or not i'm just i'm really intrigued as to how this this whole ps4 thing is going to work with uh with call of duty it, it feels to me like everyone has started looking at valve and counter-strike global offensive and gone hmm skins hmm okay <laughs> let's let's uh let's see how we can do that and so in the new call of duty you can actually um they're selling it as if you can have these unique gun skins now yep. and i don't know any more detail mm -hmm. than that other than you can do your own and you can post them and blah 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 i don't know if that's in their marketplace that we'll then see added on by activision i don't know but it's very really interesting that they're going down that road and doing it on ps4 and then alongside that you've got uh rainbow six being rebooted by ubisoft which seems to be their kind of version of, oh, look, Counter-Strike, skins. Um, and they're doing that on the Xbox, from what I can see. I don't even know if they're going to release it on the PS4. So it, it's almost like the big companies have gone, we really like what Valve are doing with Counter-Strike. They're getting all these viewers. They're selling a lot of the games. So how can we tap into that? It's, it's very deeper interesting. than that, though, Paul. Like, it's, it's like what, uh, CSGO came out a few years ago, was yeah. okay. You know, yeah. it was not sourced. People Actually, were fine it, with it. It was pretty rubbish, let's be fair. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not going to... I'm building up to my point. Hang on, I'm building up to my point. My point is, <laughs> you call it rubbish, I call it okay, whatever. No one's, no one was over the moon other than that it was Counter-Strike. Yeah. Then they came out with a skin system, which basically, this is unheard of. For a game to have a release, have it be a fairly mediocre release, and then have a, a game dev development like post-release that transforms the game into the, one of the most watched and played games on planet Earth. That was a discovery akin to the free-to-play model that, you know, yeah. uh, League of Legends and some of these other games really yeah, espoused and, and, and transformed. And then and all of a sudden, Blizzard you know comes really out with Heroes it, of the yeah. Storm, and that's free-to-play, and now there's mm -hmm. going to be skins discussions. Like, it's, it's how it works. Yeah. To, to be Did fair, you know what's really fair. ironic For about the Counter-Strike game? What? Um, is that when they announced skins... The entire community, bar none, all stood up and said, what a crock of shit. We really don't want skins in our game. What the fuck do you think you're doing, Valve? Yeah. Do you think we're all kids and we're going to buy toy guns? What the actual fuck are you doing? And now it's not just... One, not one person said, do you know what? This is genius. It's going to lead to more in-game sales and they're going to put more time into the game and improve yeah. it and make it a much bigger... No one said that. Not one person said that. Well, to, um, to, be fair, to be fair, for CSGO, there were a lot of problems with that game. It wasn't just course. Skins that saved yeah. it. There was a and we're lot gonna get, we're gonna get, Let's save that for, for the uh, later because we're going yeah. to hit on that hard. <laughs> uh, real quick, before, before we finally start moving in now, out of the pre-show into the StarCraft stuff, Steven... Uh, What'd you like from E3? Anything in particular you're like, yeah, I can't wait to get that and stream it during the late game. Well, I'm not. Re I actually really don't <laughs> care that much. I'm not gonna lie. I'm nope. not a big E3 person. I always get Russell when people announce. They announce uh, uh, Steam and Souls or whatever, Steve, and that's what you're getting a boner for. Come on. Nah, I'm actually not a huge Dark Souls fan. I like the games and I enjoy playing it, but I don't get like a huge boner. Honestly, the thing I'd probably be most excited for is like the Final Fantasy VII remake, but that's not coming out for like two years, so I don't really care yet. Oh God, is it two years? I, I, what, <laughs> 2017? What a tease. 
Yeah. That's also a reason why I don't really watch E3 is because well, I don't. I watched the Dark Knight trailer when, when there were when it was two years till it released, and I was yeah. like, "What in the fuck? Like this looks amazing, <laughs> but I can't think about it." You know, you, you know, it's with too the, long. With- Jeff with Deuce X, I actually watched and I misheard, and I actually thought he said the release date was 2029. <laughs> <laughs> I misheard. And what I actually said was it's set in the time of 2029. Ah, oh, yeah. that makes much more sense. <laughs> I was like, really? Release date 2020? Really? What, hey, a demo in 2020? Or Very what? aggressive. They're like, hopefully by then we have fully immersive <laughs> robo suits that put you in the game, actually. And, and you can feel real pain when you hurt. <laughs> All right, Jack Attack, real quick. Any fr- have you been watching it, or you just been working? Yeah, man. Much? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for me, the the standout thing was Fable Legends, uh, and I didn't really mention it too much at E3, but uh, what it is is it's a fully asymmetric game. It, in in the way that StarCraft is an asymmetric game because you have the three different races and it's balanced in a certain way. Um, this is going to be a free to play multiplayer game where one person is playing an RTS and making, like, the dungeon, and the other four players are playing, like, a, you know, like a, a, like a, not like a MOBA, but, like, each person has their own class, kind of like Diablo 3, just going through and beating up the bad guys and stuff like that at the same time. God, if only they invented it's... something like that 30 years ago, something <laughs> about dungeons and dragons, and I wait, can't... Wait, wait, were there right. dice things? God, right, what is right. That? The, but the but the thing is like uh, but now you can do it on the internet. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, I feel like it's really risky. It's something that's been tried before in in games and hasn't worked out really well. And the fact that the Fable people are down to like make this big change and take this risk, I think is interesting. And I'm definitely I want to see what happens. I'm just I'm not really sort of yeah, like oh cool. this is gonna be great or oh this is gonna be weird. But you know it's gonna be different. I'm just keeping an eye on it. Fable for me. Not that this is super on topic because they're completely changing the game that they were, but God, they were like the first few fables were so cool, and then they came out with I don't I'm the numbers are coming on my butt, but like the third and fourth one or whatever, third one was like all right this is okay, then the fourth one and it was like literally an hour and a half long game, an hour and a half long fable game. I I was like God, you guys, your budgets must have got fucking slashed. <laughs> it just wasn't as good. Anyways, rant over. All right, so. uh Let's move on now forward. Can we, one thing that, like, yeah. one trend that, I understand that people selling skins in all the games is cool, but there's, like, one trend that's starting up that I think needs to die, like, immediately. The whole pre-release thing needs to go. That needs to not be a thing ever anymore. Like, the oh, like default DLC? guy? No, no, no. Pre, like, buying, or I shouldn't say pre-release, buying early access games. Okay, wait. Uh, Hold like, on. I think that's being stuff. abused by certain people. By totally. certain people. Uh, can't believe that. So Dean Hall, the Rocket, uh, uh, Rocket Two Guns guy, right? The guy that did DayZ, is working on another game that's going to be a pre-alpha, pre-release game for sale. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people, and there were a couple other games that were announced that were going to be like pre-release order too. Like, I don't know. It seems a little bit. I don't well, basically wait. Cheap beta testing. Total biscuit. Total biscuit. Total biscuit. It's not no, it's, his thing is his thing is reserved. Even, it's not even cheap beta testing though. It's like the, I don't has there ever been a success story where a game like launched in pre release and everybody bought it and then it got to full release? Has that ever happened? I don't know. Like Killing from, Floor is doing it now and they saw the pre release. Mm. I don't think did it. Um I think they're still working on the game, but like Hey, Napster did a great job with that, you know. Like so, everyone was like, I'll try this music. If I like it, I'll buy it. And I was thinking it, right? the yeah, only people I've ever bought pre-release for them were Blizzard games. Uh, oh. I have did it with Diablo. I've done it with almost every World of Warcraft. And I, I think it's just because I wanted to get there on midnight, and I wanted to make sure I had a copy, and I never worried about Blizzard. So are you only concerned about big developers? Or, I mean, uh, indie developers? Or are you saying this needs to go away for big developers, too? Wait, are you, are you asking me that question? Or yeah. Is that like, that, no, that's for you. Oh, I mean, I, I, I don't like it at all. I just feel like it's, like, a really fucked up thing. It's just, like, if you go to make a game and then you, quote-unquote, sell it, like, I feel like you're selling to the majority of your audience. If the game has a lot of hype behind it, especially, like, you're going to make your you're gonna make your maximum amount of sales and then everybody's going to expect you to finish the game when there's not any more money to be made. It just seems like a weird thing, right? Like, mm-hmm. to use Daisy as an example, do you think that, let's say, theoretically, by some magic, Daisy gets to launch tomorrow, do you think there are going to be a bunch of people that are going to buy that game that don't already own it? 
Like, no, like you've already made most of your sales. So I feel like the motivation to continue What's working. What's the incentive to finish? Yeah. 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 Well, I think, so, yeah. I think the problem it creates, like, it's a system that creates this, like, really great temptation of just sort of like, we've already made our money. Let's just release this. I know we had a lot more planned, but we just release it now. Let's make a new game and make more money, you know? Yep. Okay. I can agree with that. That's a good point. Yep. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, now we engage into the StarCraft uh, discussions. First, we're going to recap some news. Uh, so after we got over here, E3, uh, Kespa Cup announced, right? Kespa Cup's going on. There are eight invites. It's going to be CJ Hero, SKT Dark, SKT Dream, SKT Classic, and then the two GSL finalists, and then the top two ranked in the SPL round of three are all going to be invited. Uh, now, they say it's a global event. The dates are the 6th of July, the 11th, and 12th of July, uh, and there are eight open qualifier spots. Jeff, do you see any foreigners uh, attempting to qualify for these? I've not really followed the Kespa Cup qualifiers in the past, but they say global event, so I imagine that even though it's held on the Korean server, uh, you know, foreigners are allowed to participate. Do you think that we'll see some foreign participation? As long as it's not held in secrecy like it was last time, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's... Well, first of all, there's no reason not to unless they're unless I'm missing something like there's an entry fee, but I don't believe there is. Um, it's just a matter of staying up and then playing on the worst server, which some guys already do for practice, and the pings aren't so bad from the west coast of, of the United States in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, for Europe, they're pretty SOL. It's pretty pretty terrible there, um, but some guys will. I mean, I know State for for example practices on the Korean server all the time. Okay, and then uh, other than that, oh. So today was announced. Hell, it's a boot time uh, is a crowdfunding project, right? Mm -hmm. That they've been doing for a while, and the Nathanius casting goal was met. So Nathanius is going to be at the Hell, it's a boot time event, and I believe that's going to be in the end of August. I don't think they've still haven't announced a final date. But something else cool was announced that if you have contributed or you do contribute to the Base Trade TV crowdfunding campaign, and I can't remember five dollars, five dollars. That's right. You get a base trade TV hell. It's a boot time emblem specific, like in the StarCraft game, and uh, I mean, maybe this is a positive like in working here, but perhaps that means that there are more icons to be given in the future. When you say icons, can you be more specific? Um, I mean, like, sorry, portraits. In, so, in, in game oh, portraits. avatars. Portraits. Yeah, you know, avatars. Portrait. Okay, thank you. And this is let's not let's not undersell this. This is beyond fucking cool. This the implications hmm. of this are absolutely incredible. Like base trade. They are not your big event casters. In fact, there's a little bit of a chip on their shoulder about that. They have have really worked hard at, at being really big community supporters and, and putting on a lot of content. And they've grown their channel from this little fledgling thing that very few people watch to one of the biggest StarCraft channels we have now. And Blizzard is recognizing that and giving them first dibs on something special. Like There is no, as far as I know, DreamHack in-game avatar or portrait. There is no IEM, ESL uh gfinity like it has not happened yet not, I'm, but what's cool about this mm. is that this kind of paves the way for that to fucking happen yep and this is beyond i mean this is something like steven holding a, a gnarled wooden staff with his you know wizened face <laughs> to the wind thirty-five thousand years ago proclaimed such events and they're coming <laughs> to fruition and it's and it's wise it's smart it's really as far as i know and i know nothing at all about you know game design Doing this kind of thing is not too much hair off the back of Blizzard, but the community support it shows, the love they're going to get, the loyalty, and just how cool it is, is astronomically awesome for them. And I, I hope there's a lot more of this. And I think that's what this is. This is like, this is that herald that, that, that that's coming, that more of this is coming. Mm. Yep. And so there was the tweet, and for those who didn't follow or weren't watching the show or don't follow the StarCraft Twitter, there was a tweet where uh, someone tweeted to Blizzard, hey, from Team Liquid, they said, hey, uh, you know, what's going on with this? And they said something about, what was it? It was skins or something. They made a comment. And Blizzard's yeah. response wasn't, you know, we're, we're looking into it or anything like that. And said, nothing to say further. By the way, nice picture. Kind of like deflecting, but in a funny way. You know, just kind of, it's not a, it's not a yeah, we're doing something. But it's more of a, a hint that I think there's more to come. And it's, this. Yeah, there's no promise. Like, it's, it, it's just, it stands to reason that they will. Like, right. uh. Not to, not again to, like again, all the props to base rates, fucking awesome. But I, if, if this was a one-time thing, which again, this is a, such a severe hypothetical that it's almost not even interesting to say. But I don't think Blizzard would blow their wad on this on base trade TV. They would save it for something far and away more reaching and large. But because they're doing this with awesome base trade, 
I believe there's going to be a lot more of this to come. And I'm, I'm just, I'm over the moon excited for base trade, but I'm also really excited that Blizzard is kind of starting to get it, you know? Like, mm -hmm. uh, people, like it, it, people have been asking for skins and just a little bit more community outreach and stuff like this, and this is two birds, one stone. It's just, everything about this is good. It's just awesome. Yeah, it is. So... We'll see what comes from that, but uh, anyway, this isn't like a, a joke. This isn't speculation. You donate five dollars to the Base Trade TV crowdfunding, and you will get this emblem, in StarCraft Two. And I mean, you know, it's the first of its kind, like Jeff was saying. So I see these things in League of Legends all the time. You see the that portrait, you know, for the DreamHack Summer, DreamHack Winter, or whatever, you know, different events. So this is the first one in StarCraft Two. It's going to be the hell it's a boot time, uh, StarCraft Two event. So I'm excited, and I'm happy mm -hmm. to see that. It's uh, cool for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really cool. It's a good good sign. It's a very good like signal. So next up on the list, I am Shenzhen. Uh Uthermal and Snoot qualified. Uh Uthermal took out Bunny Harstam and Snoot. Uh Jeff, what do you think of Uthermal uh right now? I mean, what's his He's been on the rise for a little while, like uh in the European scene, Terrans actually basically anywhere outside of Korea, Terrans are kind of few and far between and Rarely are they, um, like, Bunny was a shining beacon of light for a little while there, and still is. I'm not trying to say he's in a decline or something like that, but uh, there's just not many good foreigner Terrans, and Uthermal's been kind of on the precipice of excellence for a while here. Um, qualifying doesn't, you know, a champion make, but beating the players he did is nice. Um, it's kind of one of those things where, like, it, it's cool, and I would never take it away from Like, look, if I if I was... If we were talking about Uthermal, we're like, in control, fucking beat Snoot and so-and-so and qualified. I'd be like, yeah, pretty much the hardest qualifier. <laughs> um, still pretty good. You know, I'd do that. But the point is, foreigners have, have many a time beat really good players online, qualified for really cool tournaments, shown up to the event, and then they proceed to hand them a horse-sized phallic you know thing and say just insert this just put it in there hard and then get the fuck out of here get out so if you thermal does that whatever but the nice thing is that it is a it's a newish name newish in the sense that he's obviously been around and he's been competitive and he's been a pro and he's been very good for a while but he's starting mm -hmm. to get those results where we talk about him mm -hmm. uh you just got to make that next leap you got to be you got to be uh you got to be placing high, like Bunny has. Bunny's won tournaments. There's a couple months there we won two or three in a row. He's been on fire. So until then, cool, good for him, but nothing special. Okay, all right, cool. So that is really going to be it for for the news. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Just gaming in general, anything like that <coughs> going on? New maps in the ladder. Yes, uh, yes. Announced that they're going to close at the end of June here, which is nice. So they're taking. All of them. Okay, here's a good point about that. Uh, all of them are community maps. That's cool. So I, a lot of people are talking like, say, you know, Blizzard not taking enough from the community. Uh, that's definitely a sign. You know, they usually do take some from the community, but they'll put their own in. But all of these are going to. I'm be sure we have a segment planned to talk about this, but they do listen to the community. It's ab it's absolute hogwash. Like, yep. Reddit's expectation of of like. Yep. A thousand disjointed voices screaming fairly similar things, but usually very different. And then Blizzard not leaping to every single one of their whims is a disappointing. It's we'll talk about yeah. that. Sure, yeah, we'll, we'll get on that. Silly. Uh, I, I uh, just because this is the StarCraft segment, I think it's worth mentioning that uh, we had a retirement this month with Hassorbs, <laughs> and oh, that's uh, right. it's worth mentioning the fact that he spent over eleven years in the same team. I'm, I'm not sure outside of career that that would ever be beaten. Um, I think in even in the length of time, I think there's a couple mm. maybe, of, but maybe close to ten years in some of the teams. Yeah. Um, but it, it's an it's an it is, you know it's an extraordinary achievement to have spent eleven years with one team um, beyond loyal. Uh, I don't even know how to describe that. But we also lost Strelok as well. He's mm -hmm. he's stopped playing now. And then the following day, uh, Todd and uh, Zocca were leaving XMG. So I, I just feel like there's a a little bit of a changing of the old guard. Um, people like you, Thermal, starting to come through. Yep. Um, yeah, just, it, I don't know. We have these chapters in games uh, that last for a long time where you do see a, a changing of the guard. I think, you know, Stefano being pretty much the only guy that could play from France uh, two years ago. And, and now look at the last 16, it's full of Frenchmen. So yeah. there must be something yeah. going on. Um, yeah, yeah it, it feels like we've 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 found something in StarCraft where it literally is a changing of the guard. 
Yeah. yeah. I, I, I do not disagree. Even, like, uh, getting away from the players, because obviously we don't want to spend too much time talking about the fucking players. Let's get back wow, to the cast. Wow, Christ. Please. Jesus. Those, those diva whores. Um, like, the casting scene's very liquid different red. as well. Uh, <laughs> you know, you've got Tastosis at fewer and fewer events, and they're playing and casting different games. And I pass no judgment, I'm just saying. There was a time where, if you were a big event, you had Tastosis there, and if you didn't, you weren't mm-hmm. a big event. Um, mm-hmm. New yep. casters kind of on the rise. Uh, yep. Well, not, not necessarily new, but Todd becoming a much more cemented caster, I would say, as opposed yeah. to, like... A player caster split. Now he's a he's a caster mm-hmm. who yep. spends the rest of his time playing Battlefield or Heroes of the Storm, uh, and I think that's you know awesome. And uh, just the scene in general is very much so changing with Legacy of the Void on the horizon, which is kind of cool too because for a lot of people it's new opportunities. Like, I mean, Lycan was this god awful and really shitty host, and then he you know he went out <laughs> and he got Destiny, so all of a sudden he had a platform, and now look at him, he's like the number two or three best. Uh, Starcraft host behind Destro, and that's, Ch- that's Channel that's Man reincarnated. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. So whatever happened with uh, well. I saw I saw the drama tweet. What happened, Lycan? What? Uh, Did you drama that... tweet? Uh-oh. I I've drawn drama tweet. What? <laughs> Did you drama tweet, bro? Oh, come on, Destro. Oh, I think oh. Stop doing that. His show had like a twenty minute delay, and I was just griefing him in the chat. I was just like i've been here i've been on this side i have been waiting for steven for 15 minutes before i get the fucking feeling i was just giving him some shit next thing i know it's like you were permanently banned from talking to desro fighting and i'm like oh, got him oh, oh my man my man is that how we play and yeah, so that i just but, but presumably like and if you followed the chan man you know rise to fame then you've got 40 other bots that you can put in that channel anyway right this is true. Oh, this is what's so adorable about Lycan is he's so new that he didn't get any of those jokes. I said like three Chan Man jokes last time we did a show, and Lycan was just like, "All right, I'll read about that later." Like, I gotta find out what's going on here. Like, like, I know oh, about okay. the view bot, the I know about the the Reddit bots and the. Uh, uh, that's really yeah. Only you know now, a it's a new week, bro. Thing. No, I knew about the Reddit bots. I was. I'll get, I'll get you with some Flash Starcraft 2013. Do you ever have like in a little while? You ever have th- those weird things that you just. You remember a discussion you had, but you remember what weird shit you were doing. I remember that the day that he had Richard Lewis on and that he was, like, having his big confession episode, I was at the bank making my rent payment in a town that I had never been to. And it was a a, what was that bank called? Uh, It was a Capital One bank. And it was way too fancy but really small. I just remember these things. So. you're going to spend more time with me. It's, I'm going to help you out. Uh, that's a shitty story. Yeah. Nobody cares. You pay your rent to a bank? How does that work? Oh, uh, so, um... <laughs> so now we're going to on it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. With the bank on the house. No, no, no. no. So, Welcome to My House is Your House with your guest star, Lycan. <laughs> they, uh, they had a... What is it called? Um, they have an account at that bank. So I would just go and I'd give them my my check and the account number and then it would deposit and then i would so i just want to paint a picture here because this is really interesting to me okay <laughs> All right. we actually want to stream today guys we have a guy that hosts an esports talk show on twitch.tv on the internet that was recently acquired by amazon.com and the way that you pay your rent is you go to the bank and you physically write a check well no i would just i would use my debit card at the bank so you what? okay so they, they, if they, uh, these, these guys that you rent this property from, uh, have they heard of this really cool thing called the internet? Uh, so it, they own this when I lived in a house in uh, Baltimore. So they, it wasn't like a, an apartment complex that likes to use you know okay. modern technology. I mean, I, I, I will just tell you this about Baltimore. All I know about it is what I've seen on the wire. So that's a <laughs> shithole. So I can, I can understand why they don't have the internet there. <laughs> Oh Lord! Well, I mean, we've seen a lot more Baltimore in the news recently. Not just on the oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let me tell you what: Baltimore is a really fucking nice place. And I tell you what, I'm I, sure it is. I'm sure I mean, it is. I've only seen the water. It depends on where you go and it, who you it, are. Well, yeah. that's any that's, city, that's man. That's in every city, man. There but, are like yeah. scary yeah. parts of Baltimore, and there are like not scary parts of Baltimore. Oh. All right, moving on because I, I I go on that one for a long time. But yeah, so changing of the guard, and I think one of the big ones we've seen. Recently, is the you know before those announcement were, announcements were made, we saw WCS and uh, we saw WCS and these different events taking on new Gfinity even taking on some new uh, talent on the hosting side and yeah. the casting side. Uh, Jeff and I mean this very seriously. Do you see Huck? He's transitioning over to oh. caster uh, a little bit. Do you see that being a 
a more permanent direction for him? Do you think he's going to start slowly fading out of the uh, the pro playing? Because he says he's going to keep it up, but I, you know that takes a lot of time to stay up to be a caster. Well, okay, so this is pure speculation. I haven't asked him, and obviously, you know, Huck's a very opinionated and, and driven guy, so it's this is just speculation. Um, but from what I from what I would say is like, let's well, let's let's look deeper because I I know that position. I was a pro gamer doing some casting as well back in the day, and if I didn't qualify for an event or I wasn't invited, I looked at casting that tournament as yeah, missing out on two or three practice days. But was I two or three practice days away from winning an MLG or qualifying? Probably not. And then a lot of people would say, well, with that attitude, certainly not. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, there's something to be said for that. But as a young guy who knows he's not going to be a pro gamer his entire life, I'm sorry. That's just a harsh reality. It's, it, it's, it is for everyone. Uh, getting some casting in, getting some chops, getting in with some of the organizations, is that a better move than those two or three practice days per event where you may or may not do better based on those two or three practice days. I think the smarter bet is, is getting in casting and, and Huck has shown to be a pretty damn good caster too. Like he's got the humor. Um, he has voice inflection, which I know sounds like a joke, but is actually something special in an RTS scene. And uh, he definitely has the knowledge. So he's got what it takes. Um, and I, I think, I think if, if he starts casting every single event, like Todd did, like Todd was like, Oh no, I'm a player, but also a caster. You know, he's like, he's like, no, you're fucking not. Like, you're actually not bad, qualifying yeah. for anything. <laughs> no, that wasn't bad. You're casting everything. Like, it's starting to be like instead of doing an event. Like, there's there's cool moments where he, because Todd's always been an amazing player. I'm not trying to take that away from him, but was he a top tier European player? Probably not. Probably not. So it made more sense for him to cast. But to try to be a player and caster like I did before him, where I wasn't a top tier player either, but I, you know, could win some games, uh, it was hurting my playing ability in the name of becoming more of a caster. So mm. for Tiffler Huck, I think, I think judgment's out. I think it's a little different with Todd. I mean, if you think back to last summer, he was still making the top 16 in WCS Europe, which, you know, I think we'd all agree was, you know, a decent standard. Um, it was great. But then after know, so, that, he got blanked and then before that he didn't make top 16 that was yeah and, and he, he also made results. some he, he made top 16 at dreamhack as well last year so i wouldn't i wouldn't say that he his playing suffered what i think happened was and i know from talking to him at the time was that he puts in probably as much if not more than anyone else into studying the game and so for him to feel prepared for a, an event where he is commentating on it he would put in almost more preparation than he would if he was playing in it and i think that's a bit weird but he just didn't have time to do both things really, really well. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't, I'm not saying that, you know, had he only been playing, he might have made top eight or top four or maybe won a tournament or something like that. I'm not saying that, but it, it, I think a lot of people see what commentators do on games and they assume that it's very easy. And the best ones do make it look easy. And Huck, I think, will in time will fall into that, uh, that space. I think he will be one of those that just makes it look really easy. But trust me, even the very best of them out there, people like Apollo, who's probably one of the work, hardest working guys I've ever worked with, have to work at being a great commentator as well. And it's it's a full time role. Steven, yep. have you ever thought about going that that route for casting stuff? No, yeah. I do my streaming thing. But I mean, I can understand the casting thing too. To take to take what Jeff said a step farther too, um, the difference between putting an effort into casting and, and like playing, it's not even the fact that like it's the fact that if you do the casting, like if you're guaranteed to make as much money as somebody finishing like at a decent spot in an event. Like even if you didn't cast and you'd qualified for an event, like you're not even guaranteed to make as much as you would have if you would have just put the time into casting. Plus. I mean, how many connections and whatnot do you really make by playing in events? I mean, I guess you kind of sort of do a little bit. Not really. You get name recognition. But when you cast with events, I mean, all of that networking, that's really fucking important. You get to meet all the organizers. You get to meet all the other people doing it. You get to be recommended for other events. Like, I mean, in terms of, like, building a career, casting is 100% the way to go. I mean, that's very, very obvious, I think. Um. I'm I'm just curious though. I mean, you've done really well as cat as a caster before. A lot of people have. I don't think I've ever really done well as a caster. I think that I can cast, and my fan base will like carry me through the Reddit threads. But I don't think I'm an <laughs> exceptional caster or whatever. Like my game knowledge is okay, but I mean, I'm just as good as any other like pro gamer that would go to cast or semi pro gamer that would go to cast or whatever. I don't think I'm. I don't, I don't think that my casting was like exceptional ever. That's very. I think it's very response. difficult. No way, well, it is. No, I think it's very difficult for a lot of players because. It's not the same. It, it is a very different skill, as Jeff kind of alluded to with the voice inflection. It's just one of many different things that you need to learn as a caster. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can't teach that stuff. You actually have to be born with it. 
Um, and, and other times you can get better at it. I think Nathanius, if you look back at Nathanius two years ago, oh, absolutely. you look at him now, he's a completely different commentator now uh, in every way, you know, technically speaking and the way that he uses his voice more and uh, and even his knowledge of the game, I think, is much better than it was two years ago. So you, know, you can learn this stuff, but it takes an awful lot of dedication and hard work. Mm. Um, and a lot of the players, I think, underestimate how hard it is. I think Snoot was the best one. When, when he came to WCS, he... Day one, he said, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. You know, I can just focus on commentating. It's really easy. And I spoke to him <laughs> on the morning of the second day, and he was like, man, Jesus, I don't understand how you guys work this hard. <laughs> so that was a real, He's you know, so it was adorable. a great eye-opener. Yeah, it was, uh, he had it was a real eye-opener for him. He had a moment where, uh, I'm, I'm sure Snoot's okay with me telling the story, and even if he's not, I'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> He was sitting there and he was like really nervous because it was like a PVT or something like that. But he was on the panel and they're you know they're like, all right, Snoot, what do you think about this? And he's like starting to talk, and then the producer just in you know producers do this. They have a moment where they're just kind of forgetting. And his ear is like, cut to camera four, cut to camera four, go live. And he and he did not know how to handle it, so he just like in the middle of this event. And this is I, this is Katowice where we had record breaking yeah. viewership, like hundred thousand people. He just like stopped and was like. And, and and we're all just kind of looking on plate, you know, caster like we're like, and he's like, and he just like, and he looks up and he's like, he gulps, he like audibly like, and we're like, we're like, oh, Snoot, it's okay, like it's PVT, but you know, like we save him. And afterwards, he was shaking, and he's like, he's like, they can't talk in my ear when I'm talking, like that that I didn't know what to do, I, I didn't know what to do, I, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. He, he was like, you know, he's a very he's a consummate pro. So he had a little bit of a breakdown because he was not prepared for that situation, and then in front of such a large audience, it got to him. Does Snoot do that in the booth when he's playing the game? Fuck no. The guy's been there a million times before, so it's it's like a different form of professionalism, basically. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to go to our first break of the day. That covers the uh, all of the... Uh, I don't want to use the word fluff because we actually talked a lot of really good stuff, but that's just the general StarCraft news. When we come back, we're going to talk about Legacy of the Void, the community perception of Blizzard, and how they're handling community suggestions and feedback we're going to talk about comparing blizzard to valve the success of valve with games like counter-strike and dota and uh where blizzard could learn or where we're you know misunderstanding the the different game genres and whatnot and we'll finally wrap it up with youtube streaming and the gom tv stuff so uh stick around we will be back shortly talk to you soon